morning from uh, Seattle, Washington, USA. Uh, it is uh, July uh, 28th, right? So the, uh, you know, time fly by so quick. And uh, welcome, welcome back to week uh, number 10 of 20. Today's subject is about the mindset, right? Uh, it's one of the most important subject in the, uh, you know, uh, in life, you know, in business. Right? So, uh, you know, when it comes to the mindset, you know, the, I wrote down here that, yes, uh, you know, when I was young, you know, what I learned about is that, you know, the importance of the mindset, you know, how it that can have to do, you know, I escaped Vietnam, you know, to China, you know, back in 1989, you know, and I, all be, I, I always believe that I can get to the destination despite all the hardship that I'm facing, right? So I keep thinking about yeah, that I'm gonna be in America no matter what, right? So I keep that, you know, thinking, you know, that I can get to the destination. And, you know, in 1993, four years later, I end up in Seattle, Washington, right? So when I, when I get into the business, you know, I would like to own and operate it, you know, the, you know, the, 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 the number one, you know, company, real estate in, in the market area in Seattle, Washington. So, you know, I end up, you know, owning Windermere, you know, for over, you know, decade, right? So we do like 32% of the market share locally here. And then went to become a, you know, a Prudential, uh, only the operating the Prudential real estate, as you know, and serve over 3,000 customers here locally and, and create an advanced business workshop and train and coach over 146 entrepreneurs and 11 out of 146 become a self-made millionaire. So the first thing that we learned about, that, you know, you know, we in the, you know, um, we operated in the back market on the planet. Right. So, you know, from my own experience over, you know, 30 years is that uh, there's a, you know, there's a one thing that I learned. Right. You know, it's about it's about your subconscious mind. What do you what kind of input, what kind of positive information that you can fit into your mindset every single day so that you become, you know, strong and productive. You know, the first thing about the mindset is that the. You know, I wrote down is that you become what you think about most of the time. You know, Erna and Gail Conan, he one of the best motivationals. You know, he, he invented mo motivational speaking in the U.S., right? And after that, we got, you know, Erna and Gail Conan. And then you, we got so many, you know, speakers that speak in the same subject. But, you know, Erna and Gail say that, you know, you become what you think about, right? So... If you're thinking about the plan, the business plan that you have, and you keep that business plan foremost in your mind, and that can set yourself for a, for a positive result, right? Since you know, since your mind can hold one thought at a time, let me ask you this question: What are the thoughts that you hold in your mind? And if you know nowadays, right? If you look at it. If you look at the market where we are right now, you know, you have retail, you know, you, you, if you're watching, you know, you're watching CNN business, you, you're watching Bloomberg business, right? You know, most of the retailer in real estate is closing down, bankruptcy at all time high, right? And if you look at the news, you know, you know, if you look at the news, how many percent whether CNBC, CNN, you know, CBF and NBC, you know, from local to national. You know, how many of those news that you watch every single day before you start your day is positive versus negative, right? So because we live in a world that's so much negative that going on, right? And then you feed those, you know, into our, you know, beautiful, you know, subconscious mind every single day before we start in our day, right? How can you really perform at your peak when your mindset is positive, when your mindset is negative, right? I'm sorry. 
But the so you become what you think about. I want you to think about like what are you thinking about every single day before you start your day, right? So, so I wrote down that yes, you know, I wrote down that from another quote from Napoleon Hill is that, you know, thinking big is a major issue in growing a business, right? You know, you close your eye and visualize yourself doing that type of business that you want to do, right? I talked to one of my friends, he's from Vietnam, he's civil engineering, and become one of the very top developer in the state of Washington, over closer to a billion dollar residential develop residential and retail development, you know, back um, you know, back before the market changed. Um, right? So he told me that well, you know, Mike, if you're gonna have, if you're gonna have to think anyway, why not think it big? Does it cost money to think big? No, right? So thinking big is a process that we all can learn. So you know, Napoleon Hill, Na Napoleon Hill quote is that what the mind of men can conceive and believe, they can achieve, right? What the mind of men can conceive and believe. It can achieve, right? So, are you thinking positive? Do you believe in yourself that you can get to your goal, right? So, it's the thought process that I always started, you know, back when I was young, you know, when I was 13 and 14 years old, I was in China during that time. And I think I dream of being in America, right? And be get into the business, become an entrepreneur, you know, helping, you know, thousand of customer, right? That's what I thought. That's my, how my thought process, right? So if you're gonna, you know, if you're gonna, you know, your mind can hold, you know, one thought at a time, right? How much of those thought is positive versus negative, right? So, so, you know, I wrote down here that, yes, you know, you always be honest with yourself about where your skill are so that you can develop the strength you know to win the business game on a daily basis right you really have to look at yourself and say you know i am in the service business right i'm talking about real estate is something that you know i do for 22 years right as a developer owner and, and you know owner and developer that's what i do for 22 years i can only I can only relate it to real estate business, but all the business is the same, right? So if you look at it and say, you know, be honest with yourself about your skill, right? So if you wanted to, if you in, if, if you put, if you invest in real estate, right? Whether it's residential, whether it's uh, multifamily, whether land development, right? Uh, whether income producing asset, what do? If you if you can say, you know, I really. I do not know how to raise capital, you know, to drive capital to my project, right, to my own, uh, to my own company. You need to ask yourself a question of, on the capital raising skill, right, on a scale of 1 to 10, you know, where are you, right? Where are you about that skill? I mean, 1 is in the worst, 10 is being the best. Where are you right now, right? Are you ranking yourself like 5 out of 10? Are you ranking yourself like three out of ten? But if, let's say you ranking yourself, be honest with yourself. That's a one thing, right? Be honest with yourself where your skill is. But then you know, look at like the net, you know, the net ninety days. You know, the net hundred and twenty days. You know, if you ranking yourself from three out of ten, would you take it from three to six out of ten in a, in the net hundred and twenty days? And who's going to train it to you? Who's going to coach you, right? Who's going to help you to, to get from 3 to 6, from 6 to 8 in terms of the skill? Because the moment you, you improve your skill, you be honest with your skill, right? The income will, uh, the income will follow, right? So you, let's say you don't have a lot of customers right now, right? And you need to go out there and seeking for new business. You expand your business. But you don't know your, you don't know, you know, you don't know customer acquisition skill, you know, that, that included, like, you know, like lead generation, prospecting, you know, follow up, making presentation, right, right? 
And you know, if you rank in one of those five skills on the scale of one to ten, like customer acquisition, right? Follow up skill, you know, presentation skill, and closing skill. If you really rank in yourself of those and say, you know what? I look at straight in my mirror by myself and I say, well, you know, I am like ranking like, you know, like three out of ten, you know. So that I need to have some room to improve, right? So you be honest with yourself where your skill are so that you can develop the mental mental toughness. Like it's called like I call like I go I mean I go to the gym every single day and you know I wake up at five in the morning, I go to the gym, I work out, and the two I'm working out on a mental fitness and then physical fitness. I understand, you know, like in Washington State right now, you know, all the gym are closing, you know. But that's what you need to work on, right? You need to feed yourself positive information. You know, uh, uh, mental fitness is as important as physical fitness. And you need both, you know, to win and to be the, to be the best that you can be, right? So, so Zig Ziglar, he wrote, he wrote down a quote and say, you know, every single day, you know, you check up from the neck up, right? Every single day, you wake up, you check up from the neck up. From the neck up, that's the mental fitness, right? Right? So how positive you are, right? About how positive you are about the business, you know? And I always look at it and say, you know, in business success, it's about, you know, it's about three words, right? That I, that I learned. The first one is attitude. The second is approach. And the third would be expectation. What is your attitude toward the market that you're in today, right? What is your, your, what is your approach about the business that you're in today? And what you ex, your, your expectation, right? So, you know, I, I spent a good, you know, 15 years with the ICSC Retail uh, International Council of South Bend Center doing the training, doing the class, share, share some great idea with a lot of entrepreneurs, you know. But, you know, you look at like, uh, but you look at and say, um, you know, everybody complain, well, you know, the, uh, the retail market is going downhill, you know, there's a, uh, there, you know, that, you know, that Amazon that be able, that pick up all the business retail, right? And then, you know, right now it's just like in the, uh, in the time that we're in right now, you know, like bank, retail bankruptcy become like a norm. Let me tell you one thing. I am in, here in Seattle, Washington, right? And I look at, you know, headquarters, company that build here like Costco. You know, Costco, Costco, you know, they don't take the attitude that they cannot compete and sell in today's market versus other, right? And we see that all the big brands are closing down because their attitude toward the business is that they, you know, they give up before they start it, right? So I want to ask you the question about what is your attitude about the real estate business that you're in right now, right? Right, so they're, they're still in, you know, if you look at the last 10 years, right? You in residential, which is over 1.2 million member, right, from the NAR Association of Realtors. You know, if you look at it in a down market like 2008, 2009, 2010, we still have a 4.4 to 4.6 million homes sold in the marketplace. And this year, you know, at 10 years later, you look at, we still have about 4.8 to 5 million homes, right? Except you know, the people in the business it will be reduced you, when you have in a good market, when you have 5.2 million homes sold, but you got 100% of the agent uh, participate. But now we have about, what, 20 to 25% agent that participate, right? So you will really look at it and say, what is my attitude? What is my approach? And what is my expectation? What do I expect it for myself, right? What do I expect for my business, right? So, attitude, approach, and expectation, that part of that. So, the, um, so I wrote down here that, you know, the eliminate the option is called failure, right? So, I watched I watch the uh, movie called Apollo 13, right? So, you know the astronauts, you know, um, they went, when they fly to the moon, right? They don't have the option, it's called failure, right? 
right? If they fail, they die, right? So, you know, when sometimes, you know, you're in the business, sometimes you're in the mission, you know, sometimes you're in, you know, you, you, you know, you, you want to work, you want to build the best business that you can build, but get, you know, you got to look at the failure of like, you know, what is the, op you eliminate that, that option is called failure, right? So, so, um, you know, you know, it's, it's, it's no such thing. It's a failure. It's about what you can learn from it, right? So, so, uh, I don't doubt here that yes, you know, negative thinking is more powerful than positive thinking, right? So we have to eliminate the negative thinking, right? And how do you do that? Every single day, like Zig Ziglar say, you wake up, you check up from the neck up, right? You check up from the neck up. You need to feed yourself with positive information. Positive MP3, positive book, you know, affirmation, right? Thinking about the positive client experience. Thinking about what you can do for yourself. Thinking about what you can do for your, for your family. In terms of, you know, if you were to improve your business, and what are the rewards for the business for yourself, right? Keep thinking about that. Keep thinking about positive every single day. Because I know that we in the, you know, we in the, we're in the middle of the pandemic of our lifetime, right? And none, I mean, over 100 years. We, don't, we do not experience something like this, you know, in our, in our lifetime, you know? So it is what it is, right? This is a new normal that we all have to deal with, right? But what, but you know, get over it, right? Get over it. You deal with it, you know? You, you, you deal with it and, and, and run the business and live your life, you know? Because... It is what it is, you know, nothing that you can do about it, but you can do, you have control on what you can do for your mental, for your mindset, for your business, right? So you really have to put like a guard, you put like a fence, you know, what it is that you put up the fence to protect your beautiful mindset about being positive, right? So, so you know, I wrote down here and say that, yes, you know, answering the questions to determine the strength of the mindset, right? The strength of your mindset, right? So the mindset is so super important, right? So it's, it, it's like, it, you know, like me coming from Vietnam, you know, escaped to China, you know, went to Hong Kong, and come to Seattle. I only think about one thing and one thing only. It's a get to my destination, get to my, get, get, get to the U.S. That's my mindset, right? So, you know, I found myself in the U.S., right? So, in business, it probably think the same way, you know. So really, the what is the strength of your what is the strength of your mindset? You know, you ask yourself a question, so that what drive me the most and why? You know, what driving you toward the business? You know, like, you know, what did it drive you? Perhaps you want to, you know, you want to set a good example as an entrepreneur, as an investor in real estate so that you can inspire, you know, be a good example for your children, right? To follow, right? Or you wanted to, you know, make more money, build good business. It's just like one of my students, you know, go back to Africa and build a habit over there, right? You know, for the poor people. And, you know, what is it that drive you? What is the reason that drive you forward in the business, right? And then, you know, what is my real motivation to be in this business? You know, I talk about motivation, right? You know, you, you ask yourself a question on the scale of 1 to 10, how motivated are you to be in this business? And why, right? So, what is motivation definition in English? Motive to take action, right? Motive to take action. The, the people that do not have motivation, they do not take action, right? The, more, the people have low motivation, they take low action, right? The people have motiv high motivation, they want to take massive action, right? The, your client, you know, they don't have a motivation to sell. 
you know, they gonna they 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 not gonna sell, right? Because when they have low motivation to sell, their pricing, you know, it, it not in the market to sell, right? If people have high motivation to buy, they will they will buy, right? This buy, you know, uh, what you do. So what the real motivation for you to be in this business, right? What is your why? That's the question that you ask for yourself. And who do you do it for, right? Why are you doing it and who you do it for, right? So that, those are the questions you ask yourself, you know, to determine the strength of your mindset because you know, your ability to motivate yourself, right? You know, uh, you're motivated yourself to be in the service business like today. It's very it's crucial. It's very important, right? And you know, I telling you, my um, you know, I I telling you, you know, my entrepreneur, you know, my future, you know, multi-millionaire in real estate. Yes, you know, you ask yourself, you know, who do you do it for? Why you do do? Why you doing it, right? And the last one is, what hold what holding me back? What holding you back about your production? What holding you back about you know be be great, you know, instead of being mediocre, you know, be great, right? Because, you know, it takes a mouse, take the same amount of time to be mediocre versus being great, right? Why not make decision to be great, right? But if you make that decision, what is it that holding you back, right? What is it that holding you back, right? So if, so, so the, um, so, and, I wrote down here is that you know we make make we need to make a tough decision and move away from a traditional or non-productive business of real estate activity, right? So what is it traditional in real estate, right? Like you know sit in the office and wait for business to fire you, that you know like you know like you know holding the uh, like like floor time in residential office. Sitting there, you know, in the office and wait for business to fire you, you know, like, you know, running, you know, marketing campaign and sitting in the office and wait for the phone to ring, right? You know, I got one entrepreneur that I coach and he say, well, how, how, why, how come your production it is what it is? You know, you don't, and he say, well, you know, my, my phone is not ringing. And I told him and I say, well, since your phone is not ringing, you ring the phone, right? The customer don't call you, you call the client. And how many prospecting that you call every single day? How many appointments that you set every single day? How many appointment, business appointments you go on every single day? And what is your ratio from going on the appointment to contract side, right? Every single day. And how many contracts that you put in escrow? And how many closing that you're going to have, right? So, being being traditional from the real estate and waiting for the business to fire you in today's market is unreal, right? You know, you're hurting yourself by doing that. So you got to move it away from all the traditional, you know, like waiting for business to fire you. But, you know, go to the workshop, you know, learning the system that we teach you, right? The system of customer acquisition, you know, follow up system, right? the presentation skill, right? And, you know, learning what you need to learn so that you gain your confidence. The more, you know, the knowledge is equal confidence. Ignorance is equal fear, right? You cannot be uh, the best if you not, if you don't have a positive, you know, uh, thinking, you know, if you don't, if your skill is not, you know, it, 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 it not great, you know, it's not gonna give you the confidence, okay? So, uh, so, so, yeah, so what, what is it that about, you know, we must have the true understanding of both business and personal accountability to be a mentally tough, right? Um, you know, I help with the uh, Veteran Northwest, which is the U.S. Veteran, North, Veteran Northwest in Seattle, right? So I associate myself with, uh, you know, military, 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 you know, retire, you know, in Vietnam, right? You have military in Vietnam. But this is, this is the quote, you know, from, you know, Senator John McCain from Arizona. 
and the uh, the POW, you know, uh, prisoner of war, when they were uh, when they were, you know, when they were in the Vietnam uh, uh, Vietnam prison during the war time, you know, one of the veterans, uh, which happened to be my friend, actually my landlord, you know, back in the day, you know, when I came to America, I rent the apartment. He said that he, he said despite all the time that you know they kept in you know uh, in in prison in Vietnam you know before 1975, you know he said that you know when my this is that mentally it's all about mental when you in the prison cell the only thing you have is just the mindset right the mental you know how to how you keep yourself through it right so you know uh, one of the POW retired veteran uh, said to me that you know this is the mentally toughness. And this is the, uh, this is this is for you to write it down. You know, when the going get tough, the tough get going. Winner never quit. Quitter never quit. Right. So you really think about that for a second. When the going get tough, the tough get going. This, you know, when the market is it, it tough, you know, you become tougher than the problem you face it. Right. Right. So. You know, my mom is always telling me that, you know, you know, if you ever climb, you know, I'm a skier, so I ski at the Whistler Mountain of Blackcomb or, you know, um, you know, Stephen Pass, you know, we're high mountain, right? I'm a skier. So my mom is reminding me what my mom told me when I was young is that, you know, uh, Michael, despite how high is the mountain, if you climb to the top of the mountain, you taller than the mountain, right? So despite how high is the mountain, if you climb to the top, you taller than the mountain, right? So, so uh, you know, the be mentally tough in today's market, you know, to deal with it, right? Cause, you know, that's what the customer are looking for. You know, people will feel your energy, right? People, you will feel that you care about them and solve the problem for them. Your family, your your loved one is gonna believe in you that you have valuable, you know, service contribution. You know, because you only can make it better, right? So, the the last one, the last two point I wrote down here is that we must make the decision that we are willing to be coach, right, and develop a skill of a coachable person, right? So, it's no doubt in my mind. That you know, Advanced Business Workshop, you know, a 20 section, 20 width, you know, if you learn and apply what you that what you learn will help you better, right? But I'm also knowing that, you know, you know, if everybody needs a coach, you know, somebody that motivate, somebody educate, you know, and then somebody gonna confront you, you know, on the day, you know, all the you know, all things that not going well the way that you're expecting it, right? So you need to have somebody to hold you accountable, motivate you, helping you, you know, to get to the next level, right? So everybody need a coach. Then the question here is, are you coachable, right? Are you coachable? You know, how coachable are you compared to like, you know, Michael Jordan, right? How coachable you are compared to like Kobe Bryant, right? So, you know, learn what is it coachable for you and that's what I want you, you know, by yourself and look and say, what is my coachable skill on the scale of 1 to 10, right? So, you know, be coachable and if you want to come into our workshop, you know, you know, go, you know, go, and, go and register, right? And then you know, you're going to learn the skill, the strategy and the way that you can apply into your business, right? Or you can, you know, do it yourself. It kind of, it's really hard to do it yourself, right? So, so the last thing I wrote down here is, you know, both of our personal and business environment are critical to control and keeping a positive mindset, right? It's all about the mindset, right? We, I told, you know, you know, I told my, you know, I told my team, you know, that, hey. We live in the richest country on the planet, and we should not be broke. This is the richest country on the planet, right? So the choice is yours, right? The, man, the mental mindset that you control, right? So keep the business environmental and control a positive mindset.